Hello, everyone, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Dokomomo Hawaii Show, in which we are talking about architecture of the mid century, of the mid century period of the 20th century. Dokomomo is an organization, an international organization, that uh, preserves, works on, and focuses on this period of architecture. And today we've got a wonderful program with our guest. And would you introduce yourself, please? John Williams. And, and what's your, what, what do you do? Well, I'm a retired architect, but I'm on the board of Docomomo uh, US Hawaii, the Hawaii chapter of Docomomo. And I also spend a lot of my time um, helping out at Historic Hawaii Foundation. Yeah. And I've got one more thing that um, is coming up is I've been asked to be a member of the board for the John Trillo Foundation. So Excellent. And that's going to be relevant for what in, we're talking about. In on today's program. Yeah. So, uh, what we're gonna be talking about is at this particular time period in the mid-century, we saw a lot of ceramic public art. And those range from very small pieces to very large pieces. And we're gonna be covering a variety of things in this particular program. Great. So, let's get started with our first slide, which you have been seeing behind us. And there's our first slide. This is Ala Moana Shopping Center, and this is the open space that was between phase one on the left and phase two on the right, so 1959 and 1966. And as you can see in the center of the picture, there is the distant Ala Moana building. This fountain in the foreground was dedicated in 1959. The interior of the water bearing part of the fountain is tiled in a pattern, as you can see, mostly blue tiles. But then there's this tower on the right, and the tower has four ceramic, they're not individual panels, they're different size panels, but each one of the sides of the tower represents a different one of the four major Hawaiian gods in an abstract fashion. Now, this has been lost, and this is one of the sad things about this time period. We've lost and continue to lose a great many buildings and architectural treasure. This was demolished probably in the late 1980s when the Ala Moana Center was redeveloping this area. But the good news is that as we continue the program, you're going to see, seeing, see things that were not lost but that have been preserved. Next slide. And now we go to the Kailua Shopping Center. This was constructed in the early to middle 1950s. It has been altered. Uh, most commercial buildings have so that they've become more updated. But you see three ceramic panels which are on the pillars of the first portion of that particular shopping center. They are still standing today. If you look at the black and white picture, that would be in the part that's on the left. The part that's on the right and closer to us in that black and white picture is the Time Supermarket, which also has ceramic panels on it. And you'll see that there are fish motifs. This is very popular in the 50s because fish were very easily abstracted and used for this type of uh, commercial art that was popular at the time. Next picture. Here is the music building at the University of Hawaii, and this is a planter. Now, the thing that I want to point out is ceramic tile work requires you to create an overall large design on smaller individual pieces that have to be drawn, that have to be glazed, that have to be fired, then they have to be assembled into one big picture. So it isn't just that you Create it all at once. You have to do it in sections and put them all together. And this is, again, something to point out that even low cost buildings at this time had this level of artistic integrity and artistic expression in which ceramic pieces were commissioned and created just for them, which is something that we very rarely would see today. It's just too expensive nowadays. Next picture. Now, we come to Puole Circle, and those of us in the Dokomomo period are very fond of this particular little enclave of not high-end, but uh, reasonably priced small apartment buildings that are just made of concrete and cement. They're two-story waka. And they are, however, decorated. Now, this is particularly interesting. The diamond heads serve, first of all, the diamond pattern that you see there plays off of the name of the building, diamond head serve. But if you also look carefully, you see that the cement blocks that make up the wall have a pattern cut into them that is incised or debossed, if you will. And if that is put together, if the blocks are put together in the right way, they will create diamond patterns. So these debossed diamond open spaces 
are where the tiles fit in. And you'll also see for the name Diamond Head Surf in the bigger uh, sign on the lower left, those hexagonal panels are made, uh, tiles are made specifically to fit within the diamond. So it leaves a white empty diamond space there as well. Next picture. Also at Pule Circle is this. This is the Diamond Head Gardens. And one whole wall of the exterior of this small building is covered by these small rectangular or small square tiles, normally that would have been used for bathrooms. But it's got this uh, vertical striped pattern. But also look at the words Diamond Head Gardens and see how all of the enclosed spaces of the letters have a color inside them. And the D's of each of those three words are lined up in a line. Well, if you look in the lower left corner of this where the sign is, you'll see those three D patterns have been repeated in an individual tile that's been turned on its side. Again, this is really clever. And it's really artistic. And it's really uh, interesting to pay attention to, particularly for a low-cost building. Next picture. Also, Diamond Head Gardens has this one panel, which I'm really pleased about as a history-minded person, because it says right on the building yeah. who designed it and when it was built. So this is the name of the architectural firm, which is Lemon, Freeth, Haynes, and Jones. And it was done in 1959. And uh, I used to mistakenly pronounce that first name as Lemon. And Alan, uh, Frank Haynes himself informed me, no, it's Lemon. So now I can say it correct. Next picture. Now, another low-cost uh, apartment complex is located on Date Street, and there's more than one building, but one of the complexes, or one of the groups of buildings, is called Laau Gardens. That's because Laau Street is the street that goes behind where this is located. And again, you see this abstract uh, tiles are kind of scattered around on the exteriors of the, of the walls of this building. They fit into the grid of the concrete or cement blocks that the building is made up of that makes up those walls. And these tiles, some of them are purely abstract. Some of them are a little more figural. But many of them are three-dimensional. So if you look at the picture in the lower right corner here, you can see those actually have elements that stick out. Next picture. And here we see again that tile. Uh, the, the sign at the top is ceramic that says Lao Gardens in 2609. And then below that, we see a scattering of different tiles, different tiles that can be found on the exteriors of these buildings, some of which, again, are abstract, but some of which look like people. And they are particularly influenced by Hawaiian petroglyphs, which means that somebody actually took the time to research this and discover what petroglyphs look like. And if you also look carefully amongst the little man figures, there is a surfboard. Well, let me see if I can point to this. There's a surfboard <laughs> down there. No, right down there. And there's a, there's a turtle or a honu right where my hand is. And then there's also in the panel in the center on the left, next to the two figures, that is a sail, a Hawaiian canoe sail. That's so again, great. somebody took time to put this together. Next picture. So okay. now we're going to go to the part yes. that you're going to talk about, starting with this uh, Bank of Hawaii. This uh, is Bank of Hawaii in Kapahulu. Kapahulu, and this is a building that was completed in 1961, and it represented a um, on Kapahulu that the Bank of America was doing a prominent Bank of Hawaii. Uh, excuse me, not Bank of America. Bank of Hawaii. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, not only uh, I believe this was uh, done by Wimberley's office. Mm -hmm. and That's likely. Um, one of the things that was important to them was to commission a significant work of art that would be installed and uh, be a highlight when you're in um, waiting to see a cashier. So on the next image, this is the five Enomoto labor murals as they were originally installed above the cashier line at that bank. And uh, the five of them were, they're actually quite large quite detailed, quite um, uh, just almost a monumental scale. And when the Bank of Hawaii was uh, decommissioning the building in 19, uh, excuse me, 2015, they decided that the, um, they, were not, they were going to give up the, the building completely. But at the same time, they didn't want to just lose these yeah. murals. So yeah. it, they looked... Um, 
um, all over, trying to find an organization that could take them. There was um, uh, very little response on that because obviously uh, you needed a big wall yeah. and, a, and a very substantial wall. And the bank uh, finally talked to Docomomo US Hawaii, and um, we, uh, I have to give Don Hibbert a lot of credit for that, said, we'll take them. Yeah. And we almost overnight, um, the bank basically asked, okay, where do you want them? And we, we found a, a warehouse, a, a, a wonderful organization that had some space in a warehouse in Kaka'ako, and, and the bank actually um, paid to take them down and move them over to that warehouse. So that, that began our process of actually um, looking for a new home for these incredible murals, but also making sure that they were safe and preserved. So to go to the next image. You know, and before we go further with this, to get into some of the specifics, tell us about the artist, John Enomoto. Yes, yes. Um, his uh, first name is Ami Enomoto, mm -hmm. and he uh, grew up on the Big Island, I believe it was, and he is a descendant of uh, Japanese immigrants from um, Okinawa, mm -hmm. and he had a, a great history at the University of Hawaii. He um, studied um, ceramics and is really flourished. He uh, worked with a number of uh, prominent um, artists like John Trelaw. But in this case, he was commissioned on his own to sit, mm -hmm. uh, create this set of murals. Mm -hmm. And, and the, this first one is significant in that of the five, this is the one that actually, where he captures the people that lived and worked in the Kapahulu area. And, and you said that's where his studio was as it well. Was. It's, right. It was under where um, H1 goes over Kapahulu, about yeah. in that area. Yes, yes, at that end. And one of the things that you pointed out, which I find fascinating, is that these depictions on this particular panel are actual people and or actual businesses yes. of Kapahulu. And when you told me that, then I said, I recognize where some of these are because I grew up near there. And so I would have been going through this area mm -hmm. at the time the bank was built. And in the upper left corner, there's a pet store. You can see the letters PE for a pet store, which was in the Himuro building, which I can remember. Uh, below that is a mailman giving mail to the guy in the pet store. Below that, on the far left, you said, is the woman, Mrs. Himuro, or the woman who ran the, ran the store, the Himuro store in that building? Yes. And um, the stories that we've heard from people that grew up in the neighborhood is that although she had a candy store um, and the little <laughs> kids loved to come in, she didn't really like dealing with the little kids, and so she's remembered as not being very, is it, well, actually being hostile to the yeah, children, but the okay. children, it was just part of growing up in, in Exactly, Kapahulu. and so there she is at grudgingly serving candy to yes. children. Um, in the center is a guy, a gas station attendant. That's back when you, when you went to a gas station. And so they, they pumped gas for you. Yeah. You didn't do it yourself. Um, there were three gas stations in that area, so I'm not sure which one that is. Then there's a doctor. I don't know who yeah, he was. Yeah, we didn't, uh, weren't didn't find to, who he was. No. Uh, then there's Leonard's Bakery, and you can see the R-Y of the sign that says bakery. And below that chef is, or a baker, is, the, is somebody who worked at Davenroy Cleaners, which is a big dry cleaning establishment there. Great. And then uh, right in the center is, John, is Enomoto himself. Yes, in a very heroic fashion. Exactly. He didn't um, really he was, look like that. No, he didn't, but um, if you're going to celebrate um, the people of Kapahulu, why yeah. not make yourself the, Exactly, um, as and, one of the, because he was one. Yeah, and in the very center is a very orange uh, yeah. uh, panel with just a, a couple of objects, and those were items that he made and sold when he wasn't getting commissions like yeah. this. And, yeah. and then I was explaining um, on the bottom, on the lower right side, and that was a, a taxidermist. Right, and, and I thought maybe that was a store that sold fish, no, but we, no, we, it's a, it was a taxidermist. Yeah, yeah. So, um, going to the next slide. This is what it took to move each of the murals. They've been moved and reinstalled out at CLEAR, the Center for Labor Education and Research. It's in the library building out at the West Oahu campus of the University of Hawaii. And um, the leader, the director of CLEAR, Dr. William Put, has been phenomenal in helping us um, not only achieve that immense wall where all of these could be installed, but also um, he helped uh, with organizing the labor unions to contribute to this. Yeah. You can see just getting one up and installed on the wall was 
an immense Major project. Major undertaking. Yeah, it was just, Dr. Pruitt and I were standing there watching this and just were <laughs> holding our breath. Yeah, once, right. Once they got the first one up there and it was fine and then we went ahead. So if you go to the next image, this is the five of them. And um, we were able to install them in the same order that mm -hmm. they were in, um, in the bank. And uh, what's really great, those windows to the left, um, those are windows into the Clears archive where there's just a phenomenal history. Uh, Dr. Pruitt has preserved the history of labor organizations in, in Hawaii. So and this is totally appropriate for that he, because these are laborers. Yes, and I have to point out, Dr. Pruitt actually, when the bank was looking for a, uh, someone to receive them, Dr. Pruitt really wanted um, to be involved in that. He really thought he could only get one of the five, yeah. but um, it was just really incredible how we got the right yeah. people, a lot of individual donors, and just an incredible instruction crew that um, helped us make this all happen. A success story, very yeah. good, very good. Okay, next picture. And now we're gonna talk about another part of labor. Uh, I was saying that uh, we were discussing earlier, yeah. after World War II, labor unions locally took on, a, got a great deal more power. And one of the ways they showed that was the dock strike, which took place in 1949, as you can see in the headline. And if we go to our next picture, after this happened, the labor unions were no longer kind of in hiding. They had a lot more power, and they were able to not only be more, more active, but construct their own buildings. And so this is the United Public Workers uh, headquarters building, which is on School Street. And the front of it is adorned with these six huge murals, ceramic yeah, murals. And, and it's a collaboration for these murals between um, Jean Trillo was the artist, and uh, Isami Inamoto actually crafted all of the tiles that make it up. So Correct. it's just, just a, a wonderful uh, collaboration of artists and, and um, well, the two artists. And let's go to the next picture. And the, there you can see in the lower left corner of the panel on the far left is the, are the initials JC for Jean Charlot and the date 73170, which is when the, the time period that these were being made. And, and I, I, I should point out that actually uh, Mr. Charlot asked Mr. Enomoto if he could have his name on it too. And um, Mr. Enomoto was, he was, he wasn't, that wasn't his thing. So, um, yeah. he, but um, Charlot was aware that they should be the Charlot yeah. Enomoto murals. Correct. But he is the artist and Enomoto was also partly the technician who helped create them. Doing the ceramic Correct. artwork. Right. Okay, next picture. We can look at each one of these panels in succession, and there is, as you showed me, a brochure which actually explains what's going on in each one of these depictions. These are uh, striking labor workers um, at the state capitol, the Hawaii State Capitol, which was a brand new building at that mm -hmm. time. And they are hanging out, playing music, dancing hula, etc. but they're also there for their, obviously, for their mm -hmm. benefit of the workers. Uh, next picture. And in the next picture, we've got a uh, garbage can, guys carrying garbage cans. These are the garbage workers. And what I was pointing out to you was that in those days, when this mural was done, uh, it was traditional to give the garbage workers a gift at Christmas. Uh, so between Christmas and New Year's, you'd leave cases of beer for them. I and didn't that's know what, about this. Until, yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is so great. that's why there's this very clearly depicted box uh, case of Primo beer that the lady in the red muumu -mu is pointing to mm -hmm. as a gift for these guys. Mm -hmm. And ironically, not long after this was done, Primo beer fell out of favor and then they expected Olympia <laughs> beer. So this is of a particular time that's no longer there. Next picture, we've got uh, construction workers and I like the fact that they are in a excavation underground and you can see at street level in the back, there's a blue car driving by with two orange traffic cones to yeah. show you really what they're actually doing. Uh, next picture. And they, again, these are, are, these are the different jobs that this particular union represented. Mm -hmm. So these are school workers. So there are custodial workers on the left, and then there are cafeteria ladies on the right. And down in the corner, if I can point to the right part, right <laughs> sort of there, there's a, there's a, somebody is this, this girl with blonde hair is holding an open book or something that, I think it's got their names, Inamoto and Charlo, I can't oh. really remember, but it's got dates. Okay. It's got dates as okay. well. Um, okay. Well, look at that. Uh, yeah. That would be. Little hidden things. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Easter eggs, as we say. <laughs> okay. Next picture. 
And these are laundry workers, obviously, as you can tell. And I'm puzzled by and do not understand totally why there is a nun right there. I think that would be a great thing to find out. Yeah. What, what but we could maybe, it's, maybe it's in a hospital. Maybe it was a Catholic hospital. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. Next picture. And finally, these are the workers on strike. These are UPW workers on strike. Right. And it shows that they are very dedicated and that they are marching even though it's cold and rainy and dark. Uh, they're out there supporting all the workers. And so, and Charlotte and Enomoto were both labor sympathizers, Very, yes. supporters. Yes. So uh, that's why they would have done this. And of course, I mean, I believe Enomoto uh, was a descendant of people that worked on uh, sugar oh, sure. plantations. Oh, he so certainly should. He, he, would, he would have been, been yeah, he would have, he would have been very, very uh, Aware sympathetic. Of, and, right, right. Okay, next picture. And we're going to end with a discussion of another Charlot piece that was installed at the Ala Moana Hotel went not long after it opened. It was completed and opened in 1970. This is what it looks like even today. And going to the next picture, we're going to see there's the actual piece. Tell and us about it. When the owners at that time of the hotel were getting ready for the opening, they, they commissioned the eight artists to do original right. artwork. And we have the list and we have the announcement of the um, what they were hoping to accomplish. And the last person on that list was uh, Mr. Charlot. And it's really interesting. So these are full size drawings of what he proposed the statue would be. And right. he's um, working, this is actually a photograph in his house, the Charlot house out at Kahala. Mm -hmm. But um, between the time when they announced that these works were being commissioned, and the time that this work was installed, the work ended up not being a pool deck, which is where it had right. was commissioned for, but they decided this is too, too monumental, and right. so they, they found a better location. So Correct. if you go to the next image, this is actually uh, Jean Trillo working in Mr. Enomoto's studio and working on the clay drums. The statue is a succession of, of clay drums, and it's about 10 feet tall. It's a, very, very monumental. And, um, and each one, you showed me the diagram that each one of those sections that you can see a horizontal line through was a separate section and yes. they were placed on top of each other to build this. Like a, a set of drums being stacked on top of right. each other. And, right. and there, were, there were multiple pictures of Charlot working and uh, Mr. Andamoto's son, Mark, has been very supportive on all of the preservation work we've done on this. Mark remembers Charlot in the studio yeah. when, when he was a kid. So um, it was a really a great, um, just a collaboration again between Charlo and Enomoto. Go to the next image. This is the, um, the, what's draped in um, a white sheet is, or shroud or, is the statue. And it's the day of unveiling in August of 1971. And uh, the, uh, just a, a big ceremony and just um, a lot of attention, people standing up on the pool deck, as you mm -hmm. can see. And uh, then if you go to the next image, this is the uh, st statue, and that's uh, Charlot sitting next to it. So you can get a sense of the scale. Yeah. It's just an incredible presence. And um, we don't know of Charlot uh, uh, attempting another statue. Correct. He, he did a lot of... Um, murals, he did a yeah. lot of um, other forms of art, but this is, this is quite an, an amazing piece. And it was about uh, 2005 that the owners at that point of the hotel decided that it, um, it just wasn't appropriate or um, there was some question about maybe it was damaging the garage. Oh, right. Well, let's um, go to the next picture because, yeah, because before, it, before we discuss that, it got moved. It got moved. Right. Um, it had been corner. on the Makai side of the property and then it got moved to the Maka side. Yes, yes. And so it was in a garden and it was easily seen from the street. Oh, yeah. But um, this, if you can imagine, I, um, I, if I was standing next to it, I'm six foot um, tall, but I would be at about where the two hands are on top of each other. It's, it's just an incredible exactly. presence. Um, the, at that time, the hotel donated it to the State Foundation for Culture and the Arts. And um, they uh, agreed to take it on, and it's been in storage ever since then. It's really a shame that it's been in storage because it deserves to be out and celebrated. 
and we're supporting a current effort to bring it out of Correct. storage and actually um, make it available again. Correct. Well, now, I think what we can point out is that even though it's not currently on exhibit, this is another success story because it's been preserved. It has been saved. It's been preserved, it's been evaluated, and um, it's been assessed as being in very good condition. Which is, which is again, we haven't lost it. And yeah. that's one of the, the beautiful things that we can point to proud, proudly and yes. say, again, it isn't in its final place. And we talked about where it possibly could go. Uh, there is interest to move it there. Uh, and I think that'd be a great place, so do you. We won't say what it is, because it's not definite. No, it's all been worked out. But again, this is, this, is, uh, this is one of the success stories, rather than a story of loss, it's a, it's a story of preservation. And Dokomomo is dedicated to preservation. Yes. Now, the reality, of course, is that we cannot save everything. Uh, mm -hmm. We live in a dynamic and growing um, urban environment, right. and things are going to be lost. But at the same time, they can also, we can advocate for their being preserved, but we also can document them. And even if they are lost, we can document them. And we make can, sure the records are kept. And, exactly. So that we know that they did exist. Yes. And a great deal of stuff has been lost, particularly for the low-end buildings, because those are the things that are demolished without people getting worked up about it right. a lot. Right. So, for example, the, the Diamond Head Surf and the La'au Gardens are not monumental buildings that are unique art pieces, but they're very important for their time period and what they represent. And as I was saying earlier, and we both agree, the fact that they have unique pieces of ceramic art built into them, the fact that that effort was taken, that expense was made for a low-end building is really remarkable. Yeah. And that's part of the whole thing. Yeah, and I think a lot of what we're trying to do is make sure we um, help people look differently yeah. and see yes, these things. Exactly rather than just pass them by. Right. And that's what you were saying at the beginning. You didn't remember the fountain at the Moana Center because nope. it was a little bit off to the side and it was just yeah. there. Well, that brings us to the end of the program. Thank you very much for being with of us. Course. That, was, that no. was a very, I thought we had a very, I thought we had a really, we showed people a lot of interesting Good. stuff. Good. So thank you for being here. Okay, everybody. Thanks for joining us and thanks for being here on, uh, with us today at Think Tech Hawaii for the Dokomomo Show. Um, there'll be more similar shows in the future, so keep watching, and until we see you again, aloha.